Welcome back everyone, Dino Joe here. Today, I'll show you something fun. This is the crankcase that I teased a little bit in the 86cc hybrid video. It's got some work done to it. Mr. Greg Brewer out in Oregon did all the work on this crankcase. It's got one of his special cranks, all set up nice. So I had Greg build this crank for me, do his modifications to it back when I was building all these hybrids, early 2020. I picked up a few of these Shindaiwa saws so I could build all the hybrids off of. I had a couple left, I knew I did, back in my other storage shed. So I went and pulled one out, and I completely forgot what was in that box. So I'll show you what's in that box, show you what's underneath this cylinder, and we'll do some dyno runs. All right, here's what's in the box. You can see the date there, 527 2020. It's when these got shipped out to me. That's a funny looking Shindaiwa. Don't know if you can really see the cobwebs, but it's just been sitting in this box since I got it. All right, so what we'll do, I'll knock the cobwebs off of that 620, fuel it, oil it, get some baseline runs. I'll strip everything off of the 620 and put it on this 620 case. This has got the crank worked over. I'll swap the cylinder, piston, rings, everything over off of this complete saw onto this one. All right, we'll take a peek what's inside. There's the crank. Here's the work. Now, some people call this a turbo crank. Some people call it, Greg calls it a vein crank. Um, scalloped crank, turbo crank, vein crank, lots of different names for this. You can see GB right there, Greg Brewer. So we'll get some stock numbers out of this 620. Swap everything over from that saw to this crankcase. And see if this crank modification makes any difference at all. All right, stick around. I thought I was stuck with the red ones. I'll do a real quick tear down on this. Hopefully we can save the base gasket. Otherwise I have a new one. I'll have to scrape off the old and put a new one on. I think we can get away with just letting the carb sit there. Take the carburetor off, the shield out of the way. Now these coil bolts, they are some of the shorter bolts on this saw. So make sure if you get one as a basket case or something, you don't run a longer bolt through there. It'll smash into the muffler. Finally getting cool-ish. This screw. It's a larger diameter for that lower mount. The strap. Uh -huh. Then you also got to undo this one. That's a limiter bolt. And then you should be able to drop it down and out of the way. Don't forget your impulse. Another thing, if you go through this hole, there's another Torx that holds the ground wire. And it should clear out. 
That does not happen often. Normally they're gone for good. Handy dandy three prong echo clutch tool. These have the washer. So it goes drum, clutch, this washer, then the worm. This is the inner worm. Goes on this gear here. See there's notches in it that line up with the notches in this when you put everything back together. Right, got the oiler. There's another small machine washer and a spring clip on these as well to keep things from getting into the bearing and seal sometimes you just got to make do with what you can find laying on the bench but there's that snap ring that goes all the way on the inside all right we'll remove this cylinder Hopefully the base gasket stays stuck to the cylinder. Otherwise, I'll have to scrape it and put a new gasket on. 620 uses a dual ring piston. I'll take this piston off. Put on that case. Get a new gasket put on here. Get this all sealed down. All right, here's the modified crank on the right side. Factory stock crank on the left. Here's the piston, dual ring, top one centered over the intake, bottom one would be on the flywheel side, on the exhaust. Echo uses these hardened washers to locate the rod side to side, they locate it on the piston end. Use the dab of oil or just a very small amount of grease to hold those on the piston when you're sliding it back in. So I just want to show both of these cases side by side. Gasket did get messed up, so we'll be putting a new gasket on. But I'll put it back together and we'll see what kind of power it makes. See how this modified crank does. All right, we got a fresh gasket on there, a little bit of oil in the cylinder. See if we can get this to slide down over. Put this divider in, then we'll put the cylinder down. Put the worm in. Make sure all the slots are lined up. Washer there. And line up your notches with that drive. All right, where this little ground wire goes through, make sure it's in the notch here. If it's not, when you bolt the top cover down, it'll smash it and it could cut it. Get to bolt your strap back on. It's another short bolt. Hook the fuel up. Throttle rod. Impulse. Choke. Make sure everything works like it's supposed to. Handy dandy air filter. 
All right, we'll get some fuel in it, fire it up. See what kind of power this puts out with the modified crank. All right, if you like these longer tear down, put back together videos, leave a comment, let me know. What do you think about the modified crank? Think it'll work, think it won't? About how you thought? You wanna see more? Do you maybe wanna try and modify one? Split some cranks, see what happens? Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe so you can see more of this. Leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. Thanks a lot everybody. Here's the results. Blue lines are the modified, the vein crank, turbo crank, whichever you want to call it. The modified crank are the blue lines. Pink lines are the stock 620. You can see the stock saw 5.29 horsepower. The modified saw 5.42. That's about a 3% gain. Not a huge gain, but a gain is a gain. If you look at the power band, you can see how it's a little bit narrower. Stock saw, a little bit wider power band. So looking at these graphs, this being a little bit narrower tells me that's something that you can likely feel. It kind of peaks. Or the stock saw, you don't have that kind of hit. Same thing. Remember, this is a completely stock saw. You've seen all I did was change the crankcase around. So these type of modifications will probably work better once a saw is ported. Might even work better if a saw is ported a certain way. So the numbers taken at 9,900 RPM, that's right here. So like I said, not a huge gain, not really any loss, but that is definitely something that you could probably feel. It'll have a little bit different snap to it, a little bit different throttle response. I guess we'll have to get it ported up and try swapping it back again. All right, hopefully you guys like this. Thanks a lot, everybody.